Hello and welcome to the channel. This is your host, D-Day, bringing you Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. If you're enjoying the series, please hit the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, leave a comment. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Okay, so I have something special for you guys now. As you can see, I'm not wearing the helmet, so the uh, oxygen in the space station is up and running. So I'm going to give you a really quick tour of the space station. I don't have the gravity controller up yet. This is the design that I'm going to do. I have 12 crafting computers going on. They're all 64Ks um, so that I can craft 12 things at the same time. Same setup with my ME drives and the three terminals linked up to a drawer controller that is attached to all four walls and the downstairs. This is just decorative block. It's the Futura block. Uh, I put in a couple of ores already. I'm going to do ores and then I'm going to make straight lines where it's going to be the ingots and the nuggets and the blocks and then a straight line of uh, the most common things that we use like the uh, IC2 uh, tin plates and, and stuff like that. Make it super organized so that all the walls show uh, stuff that we use in our crafts. Uh, still need to fill in six more up there. Two down here because I'm going to build up an elevator. And I'm also going to fill in the bottom row here because the drawer controller can f reach 12 in every direction, all six directions. Uh, this is my me trying to learn how the ME system works. I have uh, seven ME controllers in a row because it can only do seven by seven by seven. I wanted to do eight so that I would have eight on all four sides, which equal 32 that can go into one side, but the dimensions have to be seven by seven by seven. So I had to do seven in a row, which is fine because that leaves, uh, that's a total of 28 of the 32 channels, which leaves room for me to move one up, one channel up that opens up into uh, a P2P and gives me 32 channels to run the core system up top, you know, where we access everything ME related. But yeah, it's seven on every side going down, uh, transferring one channel per, M, uh, per P2P all plugging in here and plugging into the ME system itself. On the other side I have uh, 32 channels coming out and the uh, power, the energy acceptor with a Californium for right now. That's enough to power the system. These 32 that are coming out, the, uh, the back, these are going to be the, this is the backbone that's going to carry all of the P2P channels. So there I have one channel going. It opens up into one P2P. So it's one channel to the P2P and then 32 channels coming out which attach to the uh, to the molecular assembler array that I have up top. But yeah, I'm going to build in some uh, some elevators so that I don't need to fly down. And I'm slowly building this up. This one has 12 so far, but it's going to be 32 here, 32 here, here, and there. And that hopefully will be all of the molecular assemblers that we need. And I do really like the design. I drew this all out on paper on my lunch breaks. Uh, and then all of these have acceleration cards put, put into them. But it's going to be a slow process because I'm going to actually earn all of the resources required to build these and uh, believe it or not the thing that that holds me back the most is actually wood wood because the molecular assemblers need uh, crafters and redstone torches and a lot of stuff made out of wood even though this thing looks like it's made out completely out of glass <laughs> but yeah I got the uh, oxygen vent working with the co2 scrubbers uh, let me see if I can poke in here real quick and show you uh, I have an ender tank with oxygen coming from the uh, what device was that from advanced rocketry that makes the helium gas pad and the oxygen gas pads I attached an ender tank for the oxygen and I'm feeding it in here 
with the liquid uh, ender liquid fluid conduit into the device so there's that and I thought I was gonna need a whole lot more uh, so I actually made four sets but this entire facility right now is running off of one so I'll let you I'll fly through here real quick so you can see how large of an area this one oxygen sensor actually takes us I got hollow walls so I can run cables but that one oxygen sensor and that one uh, cave illuminator is lighting everything up here and it's mirrored on the other side as well and yeah the rocket is blocked in right now because I don't need to fly it but it's the same on on this side as well just mirrored and uh, so that one oxygen with the two CO2 scrubbers is filling in this entire area which is pretty massive I thought it was going to be uh, smaller than this but this is a t quick tour of the space station for right now. Let me put my helmet on. And uh, I'll go outside real quick. Show you what it looks like from outside so far. It still looks like a giant cube, so can't really give away what it looks like just yet. And now, of course, since I poked through that hole, now it's not uh, oxygen airtight anymore and it sputters just a little bit but hopefully hopefully it won't be uh, too bad I dabbled around trying to get this docking pad to work because I wanted to take off with the spaceship uh, before when it was open and I wanted it to land on the roof over here and I'll, I'll figure it out I'll get it to work at some point but I wasn't getting it to work and I wasn't confident with destroying the launch pad uh, just yet because I don't I want it I want to make sure that I do this right and the rocket doesn't get lost so one of the biggest problems that I had right now why I'm not using the rocket is uh, the last time I streamed with Trin uh, we crashed like the the mod pack crashed and uh, from that point on the spaceship decided to land in a completely fresh generated section of the overworld in the middle of an ocean so uh, I had to deal with that and that's why the spaceship right now is grounded for right now because uh, I use it to fly from the space station to the planets uh, but as soon as I get the dialing device and everything up and running uh, using the warp drive to fly from planet to planet and using the rocket to fly from station to planet is going to be more of a novelty thing more of a you know having fun and playing the mechanic because the dialing device as we know it can just teleport us straight to each planet that we put the dialing device on so I only need to visit it once uh, let's put this up real quick I got I'll put the acceleration cards up real quick because I'll do that on my off time um, put the charge porter away I'll put that away. Oh, and I, I made a uh, lumber axe to because it has built-in vein miner, uh, or like, yeah, like or or excavate vein miner, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I just need to chop the bottom piece of a tree, and it uh, it vein mines for me. Um, that keeps me from accidentally hitting the 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 dirt under the tree and vein mining the dirt out from under me. Uh, I don't need to hold down the button to vein mine, and, and only vein mines wood. So I made I made it for just for funsies. Uh, I had the uh, five reinforcement modifiers in the ME system, so it came with two, maybe three, I think. And I just started using it, and before it completely broke, I had enough modifiers to drop five and make it unbreakable. And it's got prosperous as well for the prosperity shards. So I wanted to take a step back from uh, what we were working on. Uh, the uh, what's it called? The uh, fusion. Uh, the fusion reactor is up and running. Uh, we had some issues last time with it, and uh, I originally wanted to make a uh, induction matrix to hold that power that it is now generating. Um. Uh, but 
I decided I'm not going to do that because uh, it's kind of taking an unnecessary step because we're eventually going to unlock Draconic Evolution and that thing's going to have a massive energy storage. So um, fluids are stable. Like it's been running. Like I haven't turned it off since last stream. Fluids have not gone down. So we're making more than enough fluids to run both of these generators. Uh, everything's running fine now. The um, it's running at 96.4 efficiency. That's good enough for me. I don't need it to be 100%. Temperature is stabilized at uh, 6600 and 132%. So perfect would be 5000 and 100%. That would get the efficiency to 100%. But 2.2 million is more than enough for what we need right now. The only other problem that I ran into off stream is I had the power going into the same channel uh, I had the power coming out of the system into the same channel that I'm using the power to the electromagnets and I guess the buffer from everything that was being used uh, it ended up draining the buffer and the electromagnetic magnets turned off and they started randomly exploding on me so that was another disaster so what I did is this unit instead of making an induction matrix I'm going to um, leave this unit going into this one power cell for right now that is on link ID 2. So that link ID 2 is only linked up to output to the void ore miner right now. So the void mi ore miner is up and running again. I'm getting uh, a lot of ores that to be honest are completely unnecessary right now because it's gathering stuff faster than I need it. But this is temporary. Uh, the I, I know to move this amount of uh, uh, RF, I'm going to have to go to Flex Networks. I have to with the infinite wireless RF transfer. Uh, also, it's just the logical upgrade to go from having a big stationary induction matrix, which is pretty sweet. I like it. But yeah, Draconic Evolution is going to replace that. So I might as well uh, work towards getting to Draconic Evolution rather than building an upgraded induction matrix that my biggest issue isn't going to be how much RF it can store but how much RF can come out of it which like I said is going to be limited by the power cells being able to do a thousand RF a tick per phase but still that's a lot of guesswork on my part so flux networks is going to be the way to go and it'll make everything look cleaner too and then I can go cross dimension onto the space station with uh, bringing the power over there as well. So like I said, we're going to go towards flux networks, but uh, the first thing we need is to unlock Ender IO. So I'm going to do some Ender IO today. Uh, make a simple mach machine chassis. Let's see, what does that need? Machine chassis. Whoop. The simple machine chassis. Let's see, we need titanium, alamide plates, we need infinity bimetal. Okay, let's see, dark iron bars. So let's go to the sorting facility and let's make some patterns real quick. So we need titanium alamide, which is probably going to be the ally smelter. Titanium alamide. We need to make this. Induction smelter alloy furnace. So three titanium and seven aluminum is going to make three titanium alamide. We need that in the alloy furnace. Right here. And let's tell him to make some already. All right, and then we also, we need to turn those into sheets. And that is going to be also be a processing. We need these sheets and we can do it with the metal press. Let's see, hopefully we still have some slots. Yeah, we have one slot left. Wow, that's a lot of plates that we're making with that one unit. 
yeah, we're max on that one now. So we're going to have to look towards making uh, making more devices. You know, I know there's some compact ones that take one block space. I'll probably make those on the, uh, uh, what's it called, on the space station. So let's do, let's say, four for right now of the plates, since that's what we need on the simple chassis. Simple chassis. That's four plates. We need infinity bimetal gears, so we need grains of infinity, iron nuggets, and iron ingots. Cool. Let's make two of these real quick. And then we need dark iron bars, which come from dark steel, which looks like we need also the, in the uh, alloy furnace. The alloy smelter is something that I really want to build. That's going to make crafting a lot of different things like signalium a lot easier. Alloy furnace again. Induction smelter can be used as well. So let's see, do we have room in the induction smelter for more? Or in the alloy furnace for more of these guys? Yeah, we do. We need to do more of those. So let's see, how are we on crafting? Crafting six more, three more. There we go. So let's set that to make some dark metal for us. Is it dark metal? Dark iron, dark steel. Okay, so dark steel, we need to make those. Oh, and I already have 58, that's convenient. So let's just make two, we'll make, yeah, 16. One craft makes 16, so we'll do that. Let's see, was there an A button I could do to make this a bookmark? There we go. So yeah, if you highlight the item and hit A, it turns it into a bookmark. So that'll hopefully make it a little bit easier for, for me to wander around in. So we need the item in the middle, which is the hardened cell frame. And I don't think I have any of those. So steel casing, invar gear, invar plate, steel rod. Invar. Let's see what we got. Invar. We need invar plate. And then we need steel casing. And we need steel rods. And we need, was it also steel plates? And let's check that one again. So invar plate, invar gear, steel rod, steel casing. And then we need machine frames. That's what it was. All righty. Let's teleport over to the mechanisms section and we can infuse these guys. Ran out of, let's see, redstone. Cool. Wow, it eats that like a hog. One, two, and three, and then enrichment chamber. One, two, and three. Speed you up. There we go. Now we can go downstairs. Whoop, hi, questing ram. You're stuck in the stairwell. Let's see, we'll put that in here that in there, right there, right there, and right here. 
We're gonna let those go for right now. Move out of the way. Let's see, how are we on? Yeah, UU matter starting to back up because I'm not using any of this stuff. I'm not using any of the UU matter. Uh, let's see. We can make some more steel casings, actually. Steel casings. All right. So the simple machine chassis will be able to make one with the first one that pops out. Infinity Biometal, let's see. This is pretty funny. High quality enclosed toolkit for building your own machines, made in Germany. And then little fine print, made in town of Germany slash China. Or a town in China called Germany. <laughs> Let's see, I'm pretty sure it's finished one already by now, right? No, we're only gonna wait on that. We need just one for right now. And we'll make the simple machine chassis, which will open up the gate for us, and it'll give us another machine chassis. Uh, let's check out the Ender IO. That will open up over here. Sterling generator, combustion generator, basic capacitors, that's nice. Capacitor banks, I need to watch the mod spotlight on this. Like, I would really, really want to go towards the machine chassis. And then let's see, oh, I already made the painting machine, cool. Enchanter, farming station, soul binder, we need that. Soul vial, powered spawner, the slice and splice we need, the sag mill we need, the... Alloy smelter, I really... And the dimensional transceiver. I really want to get this alloy smelter. So we got one of those now. And now we should be able to make the chassis. Nice. We got the simple one. The third S is silent. <laughs> cool. Claim. Now we're here. Welcome to Ender.io, this is an end-themed tech mod. Cool, that offers a bunch of machines, utilities, armor, and tools. The mod has been heavily tweaked. That is one thing that I have known because I've watched other YouTubers struggling with this mod. It's pretty funny because it's changed so much in this mod pack. Leads to the bragging rights, and I'm, I'm curious because I haven't seen anyone open up bragging rights yet. Uh, we'll claim that. 30 levels of experience is nice. The generators, the basic capacitor. I'm pretty sure I built one of these when I made the, the, uh, the what is it, the painting machine earlier because I wanted to hide my glowstone. Industrial machine chassis will be the next step. And I'm pretty sure that requires this weird die that only, uh, only Ender IO makes machine chassis. We grab this one, and it's weird. It is so weird uh, because you can make it in a crafting bench. Four reinforced obsidian, four industrial bly dye blend, but then in the induction smelter, you only need one industrial dye blend. <laughs> so if you have this machine, you don't need to do this. You can just do this. So we just we only need one industrial dye blend. And this is going to be the goofy part, because nether quartz is no problem, lapis dust is no problem. The organic green dye and the organic black dye can only be made with the alloy smelter. Hmm. And that is weird, because the alloy smelter, I'm pretty sure, requires this item. The alloy smelter requires an industrial machine chassis. So I'm hoping that it's kind of hidden... There's a simple alloy smelter. Hopefully I can make this, which kind of agitates me because I wish they would just make, they would just put the, the, the simple one in the quest book. You know, like you're supposed to make this. And I'm not sure if, the, if these ones are going to require power. So let's go and go to like one of our we upstairs in thermal expansion, we have some room. I'll go ahead and get rid of the mutagen producer for right now. 
It must be made out of wood. Okay, get rid of that. And we can open up this area a little bit more. Oh cool, we can see the top of the unit. Nice. I'll grab, uh, what was it, power? Which all of this stuff is going to get moved to the space station. Whoops. Come on, dude. There we go. Get rid of you and get rid of you, because you're both being difficult. Alright, let's see. The simple alloy smelter. Do you need power? Looks like you need power. Alright, let's see what we can do with the organic dye. We need organic green dye, which requires clippings and trimmings in a sag mill. So we also need, we can't make the sag mill because that requires the industrial one. Yep. So we'll have to make a simple one as well. Sag mill. The simple one. Okay. We'll put you up top with your brother here. Alright, so let's see. We need flowers. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I've dumped a lot of flowers in here, so let's see. Poppy? Got 15 poppies. Let me make sure first. Organic? Oh, I misspelled it. Organic green dye. Clippings and trimmings. So... Okay. So we got dandelion, poppies, yeah. Okay, so it makes the, the dyes as well. So I'm not going to be wasting these guys. So anything that makes a dye, huh? Oh, cool. Alium, Azure blew it. Nice, so that these are actually going to have a purpose now. Uh, let's grab some dandelions. I got one. That's wonderful. Uh, is that how you spell it? No. Can I search flower? Aha. Uh -huh. Wildflower, maybe? Mystical blue, mystical purple, sunflowers. Let's see if the sunflowers work. Cool, we're already getting the clippings and trimmings. Let's speed this guy up a little bit. You wildflowers do not go in. Sunflowers? Sunflowers go in. Perfect. Dandelions? Dandelions go in. Clippings and trimmings. We need a lot more for the organic green dye, huh? Organic green dye is going to need 12 in total in the alloy smelter. 12. What other flowers? Destroy something beautiful. That's funny. Organic green dye. So, dandelions, poppy, blue orchid. Let's see if we have blue orchid. All. A-L-L. Azer blew it. A-L-L. I have one. Bummer. Can't use the wildflowers. Uh, Azer. I really didn't grab any of the Azer bluets. Could have sworn I did. Toss you in there. And now we're gated behind flowers again. But at least we're getting a cool bunch of dyes. I was uh, gated behind dyes the other day. Have to harden that, but get rid of that, get rid of that. So let's go outside and let's go sorting facility. So one thing I did do is I moved the... Uh, the two nature cores that I picked up with boxes, I moved them from here a little bit further away and I moved them to here. And now they're super busy making animals and grass and uh, wow. It's 
making grass and it's making flowers and it's planting trees and it's doing all of that automatically for me so that's really cool so that's one benefit to having these nature cores nearby is now I have uh, all these flowers that I need for the uh... is it still there no I guess it's not it hasn't rendered out yet uh, for the the uh, sag mill to make these goofy flower these so now I have Asia bluets to make these dyes that we need I'm pretty sure I'm getting lag because of all of these uh, animals that are that are uh, spawning because of the nature wars. Sorry, horse. But the nature core is going to make more. Seeds are already planting new flowers everywhere. Perfect. All right, so let's get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need. Industrial hemp, Azer bluets, tulips, white tulips, flax, probably not, winter squash, peanut, dandelions, barley, oxidae, maybe, amaranth, corn, red tulip, pink tulip, tallow, that, clippings, and the seeds, that might be enough. And then before I uh, hurt myself a little bit too much, let's eat some chimichangas. See, it's already making new cows. Busy, busy. All right, thermal expansion. And let's tick accelerate you and let's get some trimmings going. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you for not giving me any. Wow, is it really that rare? At least I got 15 out of it. Wow, I'm surprised I didn't get more. But And we're good on dye for now. So we got clippings and trimmings and we need slime. Slime, let's grab some pink slime because that's what I have the most of. And let's drop you into the this thing. Hopefully it'll make... How many did I need? Organic green dye. Got two. Caution, do not eat. <laughs> Alright. I misspelled it. it. Sucks that I keep having to reach around my microphone always worried that I'm gonna knock it over. We need only one dye blend, so cool, we got two green dyes and now we need organic black dye, which is the alloy smelter with pulverized coal. Coal. Oh, sweet, I still had eight. And then I still have the slime balls in there, right? Yeah. Come on, buddy. Waiting on you. All right. Who needs squid? Perfect. Uh, okay. So, dye organic. Organic black dye. Organic brown dye. Organic green dye. Um, machine chassis. Yeah, and then. Hit A on you. Industrial dye blend. Nice. There we go. I'll put that up for now. We have the industrial dye blend. And now we need the simple machine chassis. And classic color. Let's go mechanism. And no, it was IC2. 
You're still working on the 64 that I have you doing. Five is good. And here we go. We need some more titanium. The titanium alamide. Let's make 12. Two, three, four. Grab another one of you, and then let's go upstairs. Thermal expansion. And the induction smelter should do this with only one. There we go. We don't need uh, all of that other goofy stuff. Nice. The purple epic explosion of sound. That's what. why I play this game. <laughs> Loot chest. Awesome, and it opened up everything now. The first thing I want to make is the alloy smelter. That is one thing that I really want to set up to auto, uh, to to the ME system to auto craft, because then I have uh, more slots to make the alloys, but also a really easy way to make the uh, signalium. I no longer have to make the the. Uh, I don't have to melt the redstone into uh, the the fluid version and make the blend and mix those and oh, it's just annoying. But that's what uh, getting to endgame is all about, is making it a little easier, right? We can make the alloy smelter now. And we're missing the dark bimetal and a cauldron. Make a cauldron. And the dark bimetal is... okay. So yeah, we can do that. Let's jump to the sorting facility real quick and make a pattern for that. Bimetal. We need dark bimetal. And then let's make that. Get rid of that. All right, and then, okay, let's see, where do we have room for it? Come on, don't be like that. Okay, so I don't know exactly which one it is, so let's go visit Immersive and put it in manually. Is it this one? That's the rod, this one is the gear. So we'll physically put you in here. Oops, that's the wrong slot. Pattern. Right here, and then let me shift click you in. There we go. We got uh, bimetal. And let's order some of you up. Let's grab four. Bam, 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 nice. And then going back into the system. Sweet. Alloy. Alloy smelter. Yes. And then I'm gonna put you in the basement so that I can I can reach you. Got this guy here, and bam, right there. So it needs a capacitor, and I also need to feed those items back into this thing. So let's grab item conduit. There and let's dig into the ground so I can reach it. Here we're gonna extract always active and let's make a pattern for signalium. Processing signalium 
and the alloy smelter. There we go. And there and basement. Oh yeah, and this goofy decay generator has turned them into blocks of lead, which I'm just going to leave there because I wasn't expecting to build that machine at all. <laughs> Alright, so here we're going to put in the signalium, and then let's see, can I order some signalium please? Craftable signalium, and let's do 100. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I need to do a capacitor. So let's see, capacitors, do I have any? Com no capacitors from quest rewards? Cool. Basic capacitor. Is that a quest? Cool, yeah, basic capacitor is a quest. And the alloy smelter is a quest. Nice. And I know I'm going to need to make the sag mill, the slice and splice, soul binder. Oh, and if I pick up the painting machine, I'll get credit for that one as well. Double layer capacitor. Double layer capacitor. Assuming these are... Okay, you need to. You need coke dust. Do I have this stuff? I should have this stuff. Energetic alloys. Make some energetic alloys. So those two capacitors For a double layer capacitor, coke dust. Let's just dra grab some. Grab some coke. No, it's called. Pulverized coal dust. Coke dust. Dude. Coal coke, right? Where's all my coal coke? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at only craftable, not stored and craftable. Uh, pulverized coal. We got coal coke here. I see two. Let's macerate it. You're going to get sped up. It gives us the coke dust. What is that? Enderios. Must have been a quest reward. Um, those energetic alloys should be ready. Double layer. Let's make you. Perfect. Get the quest for it as well. And I'm pretty sure the octatic capacitor banks. Basic capacitor. Capacitor bank can store large amounts of power. Connecting multiple banks together is possible for higher storage input and output. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you can, instead of manually putting in one in per machine, you could probably do a capacitor bank. But uh, like I said, I need to read, I need to watch the mod spotlight on Ender.io. Um, basement. Let's put this guy in here. These, okay, they can be taken out. So that gives it power, and there we go, Signalium. Yay. Show recipes, configure, IO. It's working right now, so I'm not going to touch it. Come on, Clucker. Being loud. All right. This was the biggest pain in the butt, Signalium. And now it's making it. 124. Craftable. Let's get greedy. Cool. 
All right, so now we have Signalium, no problem. I can get rid of the dye blend, the coke dust, hardened cell frames. We got raw beef. Let's open up these. I wish they would change it. It's probably just going to be a bunch of, yeah, random dungeon loot again. I almost don't want to open these because maybe a future patch will change it back to something better than this. This is all junk. Like, I keep getting the same stuff. Like, it's it's spamming junk into, into the ME drives, and it's just filling everything up with junk. too many of those swords, I have too many of those boots, and like all of my drives are slowly filling up. Put you up, I'll put you up. Don't need you right now. That's funny. Um, I'll clean that out later. Power. All right. Let's see. We need soul binder. So let's build a soul binder real quick. The soul binder is going to require soul machine chassis. The soul machine chassis is a simple machine chassis with soul attuned dye blend. Soul Attuned is Organic Brown with Organic Black. Soul Powder is Solarium Ingots. And the Solarium Ingots are Soul Sand and Gold. All right. Grab some Soul Sand. Grab some Gold. Not blocks. Whoop. Thermal expansion. Induction smelter. There we go. Let's see where organic brown dye comes from. Organic brown dye is twigs and prunings from shrubs, from grass. Oh, grass makes clippings and trimmings. Okay. That makes sense. I think I have ferns as well. Redwood leaves, double tall grass, large fern. So fern and grass and shrubs. And now we have solarium. Grass. really don't have any because it requires shears fern really didn't throw any ferns in there shrub dead shrubs at least I don't have this stuff in here right so let's make some shears she are let's make them straight out of diamond boom and we can hit up the sorting facility. I'm pretty sure the grass and everything is going to be crazy in here again now. Yep. Nice. Bane mine. I'm pissing off the cows. More horses. Uh. 
grows this stuff so fast. Okay. Thermal expansion. Got the... So yeah. Clippings and trimmings from grass. That makes more sense. Man, twigs and prunings are pretty rare. <laughs> Oak leaves seem to have a better better chance of getting them. Organic brown. Need 12 of them. I have enough now. And let's see, we need the slime again. That and that. Thank you. And let's see, organic brown. Let's see. There are the clippings and trimmings, the daisies, grass. We need to... in the macerator. Soul binder. A for bookmark. We need soul machine, soul attuned. We're missing the corner ones, which are soul powder. So crusher, pulverizer, the manufactory, and the sag mill. Up. Nope. Up. There we go. There we go. Same thing, induction smelter with a simple machine chassis. Simple machine chassis, cool. Induction smelter. That and you. Soul machine chassis. And then soul binder. Ding ding. Soul vial. I already have a soul vial, huh? All right. So let's put you down here for right now. Boom. Soul binder. It also needs a capacitor, and then we need to energetic crystal, right? Capacitor. That's it's a bummer that I need to make these HV capacitors for this. I'm missing the bottom of the HV capacitor, which is a 
block of redstone. Did I run out of redstone completely? I did. Block of redstone. And then... And watch all this stuff that I've gotten that are Ender I.O. from loot boxes be super awesome, but I'll watch the Mod Spotlight, learn about it, and then I'll put all of that to, to, to good use. And then drop you in here, because I can always take you back out later. We need... Soul Vial. Shulker. I don't know how I got these. Right click on a mob. So Soul Vials. Alright. And then... Soul Vial. Elder. Wither Skeleton, Stray, Husk, Enderman, Endermite, Mini, Mini Enderman, Taint Tendril. Yeah, I need the Soul Vial with Enderman, and then a Vibrant Crystal will turn it into an Ender Crystal, and the Ender Crystal are used for making the Dimensional Transceiver. Vibrant Crystal. Vibrant Crystal. Vibrant Alloy. This is a vibrant crystal. I'll put you in here. And then I can right click an Enderman uh, later off stream. And then I won't put it in until tomorrow when I'm streaming again. But that's one of the machines that we required. And I'm really glad we got the alloy smelter. That'll open up some more easier crafting. And uh, let's see, did I grab all of the quests? Oh yeah, here. Loot chest and loot chest. What's this one hiding? Powered spawner. Cool. So we need the slice and splice, we need the sag mill. And we need the dimensional transceiver. And then we can work on the uh, crafting tables. These extended crafting tables, basic, advanced, and elite, and the crafting core. We can make those and then we can start working with the Draconic, uh, which we've gotten a crazy amount from farming that one time. Draconium, yeah, we got, wow, we got a lot. But hopefully the, mo the mod isn't going to be ridiculous and need like tens of thousands of these ingots just to make one item. But uh, on that, we made some great progress into Ender.io. Thank you so much and uh, Tune in tomorrow.